log linear regression. Log linear regression is designed to generate estimates for a multivariate model using categorical variables. So you've got this process where you can have categories for independent variables, not uh, hierarchical orders, but rather separate categories. So you could have cities, uh, which are not ranked. Um, you could have uh, other values, uh, such as a, a preference for a particular model of car, which is not ranked. And all of these different categories can then be used to make predictions about other categories. So this is um, a fairly unique. Linear regression uh, prefers interval level data, or at least a very detailed ordinal level data. But here we have categorical variables. Now, there's a warning, which is log linear regression. If you think about the number of variables and each of the categories of each of the variables and um, every possible combination of interaction between all the categories of all the independent variables, you're going to end up with a chart that couldn't be represented on a computer screen. So a log linear process gives you the data to create your own tables manually. Uh, it's an exhaustive process. So let's get into the uh, data set. Uh, we're going to use helping three dot save data. It's got uh, 537 cases. The variables that we're going to look at are gender, ethnicity, income, cat help, which is whether the respondent thought help was useful. Income is a categorical value indicating uh, inequalities of income values in different ranges. So the logic, mathematically, of log linear is that the dependent variable is the natural logarithm of the frequency of cases in a particular contingency table cell. Right? In the notes, I've included uh, how to calculate the logarithm and the natural log. So in terms of types, there are two distinctions in the types of log linear models. The first distinction is between saturated and unsaturated models. A saturated model includes every possible interaction effect. Now you recall from your ordinary least squares linear regression lecture, an interaction effect is when you multiply the values of two independent variables to model a, a, a third emergent property. Now an unsaturated model includes only those interactions that have a demonstrated effect. For example, the independent variables in this model are gender, ethnicity, income, cat help, and their interaction effects are in the first order, gender times ethnicity, gender times income, gender times cat help, ethnicity times income, ethnicity times cat help, and income times cat help. The second order interactions are gender times ethnicity times income, gender times ethnicity times cat help, gender times income times cat help income times ethnicity times cat help, and the third and final order is all of the independent variables multiplied against each other, gender times income times ethnicity times cat help. So you can see uh, that uh, every possible combination of interaction is modeled and it leads to enormous contingency tables that are um, uh, take a very long time to manufacture from the data provided by this statistic. So a second distinction in the type of log linear model is hierarchical versus non-hierarchical models. A hierarchical model that has an interaction effect at a given order will also include interaction effects at all the lower orders. So if you have a third order interaction effect that includes all four variables in this model, every other combination of smaller numbers of interactions will be included. For a non-hierarchical model, you won't have this. So that's why there's a major emphasis put on model design. Log linear model design philosophy is to begin with a clear theoretical understanding of the model and its interactions and then to repeatedly run the model until specific interaction effects, what are called parameters or variables, indicate their lack of contribution to the model and are then removed by the algorithm of log linear analysis. The saturated hierarchical model can perfectly fit the model and is unwieldy, consequently, and not parsimonious. Parsimony is achieved by having fewer variables and interactions selected deliberately by the researcher. So, in terms of model selection, the log linear model uses the default use backward elimination to eliminate parameters and their interaction effects that do not contribute much to the model. 
This process proceeds by the algorithm of progressively testing whether the removal of a higher order interaction effect would improve the sky-square significance of the model. So let's go ahead and run the hierarchical, which means uh, we'll list a, a set of interactions and all the lower interactions, and a saturated um, uh, uh, model, uh, log linear regression. So we do that by going to Analyze, we go down to Log Linear, and then we go into Model Selection. And here we're going to input some factors. We're going to start with gender into the factor, and we need to define the range of gender. It's going to have a range of 1 to 2. We then include the factor of ethnic and define its range between 1 and 5. So there's five separate categories of ethnicity. And these need to be known by the researcher um, on, on a, in a code book on the side. Uh, we then insert income. And income is going to have four categories from 1 to 4. And then we're going to include uh, cat help. And the range for cat help is going to be 1 and 2. Now for model building, we're going to stay with the default, which is use backward elimination. And we specify a number of steps there. All, all of this is, uh, tends to be uh, default. We could specify the model in model as saturated, which again is the default, or we could build terms. We could build specific interaction effects using this interaction builder here, if we were driven by theory. So uh, you can also choose all four ways. So it does every exhaustive uh, possible combination. And then uh, we have the um, options. And in options, under parameter um, estimates, uh, display for saturated model, we display the parameter esti estimates and the association table. And then we click OK. So let's take a look at the output. Again, I've indicated the uh, different sections by table, but this can change with the different versions of SPSS. So the first table we're going to go to is the K-way and high order effects test of the zero value. This is table 5. It's right here. All right, so we're going to look first at the top part of the table. Each K is a level of interaction order, first all the way to fourth. And all those effects that are higher, but not lower. So uh, if you're uh, missing 4, it implies uh, orders 3, 2, and 1. If you're missing 3, it implies orders 2 and 1. Now, both the chi-square likelihood, LR uh, chi-squared, and the Pearson chi-square, which is here, test whether the effects of the interaction effects are valued at zero. Here, the significance is estimated by the probability. And here, when p is less than or equal to 0 0.05, not uh, p is greater than 0, 0.00, as is typically of Pearson chi-square, it indicates that the values are different than zero and therefore have an effect on the model. So, in other words, we interpret this Pearson significance like we would normally do, uh, which is uh, a lower value is better, because it indicates a very low probability of a false positive. Normally, Pearson uh, is interpreted the opposite way. So here we have the opposite of the opposite. So just take note in your notes uh, to in know how to interpret this particular Pearson uh, significance. So if we look here, only the K1 and K2 are significant. K1 is 0 0.000 and K2 is 0 0.007. 3 is just barely not significant, and the fourth is completely not significant. It doesn't add much to the model. So let's take a look at the bottom part of the table, which is the K way effects. So each K is a level of the interaction order. K1 is the main effect only. 
So both the likelihood chi-square and the Pearson chi-square is interpreted just like it is above. It tests whether the effects of the interaction effects are valued at zero. Here the significance is estimated uh, by the probability, and again we're looking for low values here like we would traditionally with an F or T significance test. And we can see that only K-way effects 1, 2, and 3 are significant. 0 0.000, 0 0.024, and 0 0.035. So uh, the higher order effect uh, the four-way for the K-way effects is not significant. So let's go now to the test of the partial associations, which is table six. The, this tests whether the particular variables or assorted interaction effects are different than zero. Now in a saturated model, each of the interactions is evaluated by a partial chi-square and its significance test, where the probability of P is less than or um, equal to 0 0.05 is significant. Now if we look here, only six of the combinations are significant at that level. And these are gender times income times cat help, ethnic times income, gender times cat help, gender, ethnic, and income alone. So six of these uh, different combinations are significant. Now table seven is the estimate of the parameter estimates. Now each parameter of each variable and interaction has estimates of its coefficients, uh, coefficients, and these we call lambda. So these are all these estimates are all lambda values, and it also has uh, the standard error in the next column, and it's got z scores, which come from a z distribution. Z values that are less than minus 1.96 or greater than 1.96 are significant, and then we can see the significance in the next column adjacent to the right. Each parameter is either a category of a variable or the intersection of categories of two or more variables. The parameters are distributed down and to the right for each category of the intersecting variable. So from these tables can be derived residual category values that are not presented. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that we have to use this data to construct a table. So let's go jump down to ethnic and income. So here we have an eth ethnic and income. How do we turn this into a table? All right, so here I've copied ethnic times income, and I've derived a table from it. And here we have known values for the ethnicities and the income. So you see here, ethnic and income in the first category is going to be minus 0 0.109, which is this value here, Caucasian intersecting with an income of less than 15,000. Minus 0.17 goes here in the cell below it. Minus 0.113 goes in the cell here, although here for some reason it's minus 0.112. We then take minus 0.682 and we don't fill in the fourth category, rather we jump to the next column. Then we have minus, uh, rather 0.276 here in the next cell and then minus uh, 0.023 in the next cell. And then we jump then to the next column. We have minus 0 0.097 here, 0 0.226 here, uh, 0 0.110 here. Then we jump to the next column, 0 0.733 minus 0.483 and then minus 0.482. So we have all these residuals. We have these empty cells. Now, the logic here is that the sum marg the, the sum of the marginal equals zero. So whatever number we put in the missing cell has to uh, total in such a fashion that the marginal ends up being zero. So you would add up in the first column all of the presented cells and that plus an unknown number is equal to zero and by algebra you're able to then insert these values. And this applies for the column marginals and the row marginals. And then we can fill in these other values. So this is sort of a reference category but it isn't. But it's how you fill out the tables. It prov provides less than the full information. So you need to know which each of these categories are in your code book before you insert them into the log linear model, and then use those categories to construct these tables. So log linear requires a lot of additional work, which SPSS does not do for you. So how do we construct a regression equation? Well, we have a dependent variable, which is going to be the natural log of the cell frequency. And this is constructed from uh, the constant plus the lambda value per a variable plus the lambda value times a lambda value for each of the interactions that are included in that particular equation. Alright, so how do we calculate those different parts? Well, 
A cell parameter value between two var var variables for a given category um, is the natural log of that value. Okay, now this is a problem because a lot of these values are negatives and you can't take a natural log of a negative value. So this is a work in progress. I'm trying still to figure out how to do that calculation. The constant is equal to the average of all the logs of the cell values between the variables in question. So uh, you would take the logs of these transformed cells, because you can't take the log of a negative number, and then the constant or the y-intercept equivalent in the formula, although there's no y-intercept here in that sense, uh, would be the average of all of those logs of the cell values. Now the coefficient itself is the average of the logs of all the cells in that category of the variable interest. So uh, it would be all of the logs of that category. All right, so that would be uh, the regression equation. And I will, at some future point, provide a slide that shows you how to calculate the log of a negative cell. So obviously a transformation needs to take place. So we have um, the backward elimination statistics here, and this ends up creating our final model. And you can see here there's a number of iterations with the resulting uh, significance. So the final model model is estimated iteratively with a, re with a repeated chi-square test. As long as the chi-square significance is greater than 0 0.05, not less than, which is traditional, then the model is a good fit. So these significances that are high are indicators that the variable is good. Gender times in income times cat help, which is a significance of 0 0.006, is less than 0 0.05. That, that is not significant. So here we interpret the significances in an opposite fashion than we do uh, normally. Um, the next table here is the observed versus, yeah, here we have, we have the observed, uh, the cell counts and residuals, and here we have the observed expected frequencies and the residuals. So SPSS adds 0 0.05 to each observed count in each cell, and the difference between the observed and expected cell counts produces the residual, which is this here, which can permit seeing whether the particular model is wrongly specified by the large, absolute, and standardized uh, residual here. Now, uh, the log is taken, uh, these 0 0.05 is added so that um, there is no negative or zero value that needs to be logged. And the last table uh, here at the bottom is the likelihood ratio chi-square. It's a goodness of fit test. And it also has a Pearson chi-square. It's evaluated to its significance. A high P significance, again, contrary to conventional practice, indicates that the model uh, fits the data well. And here we've got two significances higher than 0 0.05, and therefore uh, we have a good fit. Now, in terms of uh, other variants, um, we have a logit log linear regression, and it's, this is designed for dichotomous dependent variables, essentially a dependent variable with two categories. However, logistic regression can facilitate all of the features of a log linear analysis. So you should never use a log linear analysis if you have a dichotomous dependent variable and your independent variables are not categorical. In other words, if they're uh, somewhat interval level because they're ordinal, or if they're interval level, just stick with a logit regression. Uh, another variation is the general log linear regression, which permits the inclusion of interval level data. Uh, categorical variables are inserted as factors, and interval level variables are also inserted as factors. So let's go and run that. We're going to run the general non-hierarchical log linear regression. So we go to analyze, we go to log linear, we go to general, and here we're going to insert income into factors, income three into factors, and then ethnic into factors, gender into factors, and cat help into factors. Here we have, uh, we're going to go to options, and we're going to make sure we have frequencies and residuals listed, as well as adjusted residuals and normal probability is uh, for adjusted. 
and we click continue. We're going to make sure that the model is a saturated model. We can also specify a custom model. And then we run this model. Now the output is interpreted for this model identically to a hierarchical log linear analysis. Uh, in addition to the normal information uh, in the previous model, you also have the specification. In this table, the cell counts and residuals, it'll give you the percentage of the total cases distributed in the different cells.